Um, it's good to see a lot of familiar faces here. Uh, it's been a while for, for myself. Um, um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Craig Thompson. Uh, I wear a lot of different hats at NVIDIA, but generally speaking, I'm sort of in the middle of everything optics and interconnect at the company. Um, today, I want to talk a little bit about you know, how we're using optics and where I think uh, this might be going for us. Um, NVIDIA is not an optical transceiver company, although we do design and manufacture optical transceivers. We do this when we have to, uh, usually because of time to market, you know, we need more bandwidth, we need a special feature, something like that. Um, increasingly, we are buying optics from the open market and using those in our systems, but I think you know, going forward, it's going to be a continual make-buy decision for us. I thought I was doing a public service uh, by clarifying gigabit versus gigabytes per second. And Chris, you can thank me later, but um, uh, this is bread and butter for some of you, but for a lot of people, this is a source of confusion, and I thought that it's worth noting that I'll be using both gigabits per second, which is, you know, us optics guys, we use this a lot, and I'll be using gigabytes per second to compare bandwidths in systems. So just bear that in mind as I move forward. We've talked a lot about the, the scaling challenge. I think this graph sums it up very well. It was a recent study that showed that the relative pace of uh, of compute required to execute uh, an AI model is outpacing the single instance compute capability of CPUs and GPUs by you know, a factor of five, and, and, and it's continuing to grow. Um, it's a supply and demand problem. Of course, one way to alleviate this is to, is to cluster together systems, which is basically what we're doing today. The gap in memory demand, which is the same as the number of parameters in a model, is growing even wider, faster um, than the compute. And so what I'm going to do over the next few slides is compare the uh, addressable memory bandwidth inside the system to what's available to the network. The CPU, of course, it's a great compute engine, does general compute very well. It can access a large amount of DDR memory. Uh, it has a lot of peripherals that make it a good general purpose compute engine, but what it's not good at is processing a lot of data very quickly. The GPU is better at this. Um, it utilizes high bandwidth memory. Uh, this picture here uh, is half of a DGX A100. This is our Ampere generation, the last generation that we, we announced. Um, this is the one that's in high volume today. Uh, the CPU can access more than a terabyte of DDR memory, but at only 0.2 terabytes per second of memory bandwidth. Compare that to the GPU uh, that can access, uh, each GPU can access uh, HBM memory at two terabytes per second, um, but only 80 gigabytes of total memory capacity per GPU. So there's a capacity performance conundrum there. Of course, one way to re re uh, resolve this is to connect multiples of these systems together. Uh, and what I'm showing here is our DGX A100. Again, this is the Ampere generation. Uh, it's been shipping in volume for a couple of years now. Um, this is, has eight of our A100 GPUs in there. Um, two terabytes per second of memory bandwidth per GPU. So multiply by, that by eight and we have 16 terabytes per second of total memory bandwidth in the system. We use NVLink 3 in this particular case to connect the eight GPUs together, um, and that, that 
fabric provides 2.4 terabits a terabytes per second. See, I'm, I'm slipping up. Terabytes per second of bandwidth with between each of the GPUs in one system. So that's eight GPUs. If we want to scale beyond that, then we need to go to a PCIe network adapter. Uh, in this particular case, we put 10 C uh, Connect X6 network adapter cards. These run at uh, 200 gigabits per second. Now I'm talking optical I.O. So that's 10 200 gigabit per second interfaces in one server to serve AI machine learning workloads. So that's about 500 gigabytes per second of network bandwidth. And if you compare these two, there's about a 30, 30 times gap between what's addressable inside the system versus what can be pushed out into the network. Of course, we're moving forward. We recently announced the Hopper generation. So this is the DGX H100 that uses the Hopper GPU. Uh, this will be coming out soon. Again, this is, a, a, a two, uh, this is an eight GPU system. We've increased the total memory bandwidth. Um, it's now HBM3. Uh, the total bandwidth has increased by 50% to 24 terabytes per second total memory bandwidth. So we've gone 50% jump in the last two generations. I, I won't talk about where we go next, but I can tell you that there's really no immediate end in sight to scaling either compute performance and addressable, or the memory bandwidth off the GPU in the next few generations. Because we upgraded NVLink in this, so in our NVLink 4 between the eight GPUs, um, we upgraded the network, it's now NDR or 400 gig ethernet. But, whoops, what happened there? Let's go back. This is still a 30x bandwidth gap. One thing we're working on is adding NVLink over optics. Uh, this was mentioned earlier. Um, this allows us to bring some of that NVLink bandwidth out into a network interface. Uh, in this particular case, we bring out 72 ports of NVLink 4 um, via 18 800 gig OSFPs. I'll say that again, 18 800 gig OSFPs. And this provides us an additional 3.6 terabytes per second of, of uh, addressable bandwidth, but this is bisectional bandwidth, of course, bringing the total to 4.4. And that's about a 5x gap. So if you look at uh, the H100 uh, SuperPog cluster, this is, this is a, a blueprint for what we're deploying in EOS inside NVIDIA, and it's also the blueprint for a world-class AI machine learning cluster today. There are 32 of those DGXH100 servers, four per rack, eight GPUs per server, We're running NDR InfiniBand or 400 gig Ethernet. That's four terabits per second per server uh, over fiber to middle of row and end of row switching. Soon we'll have the option of running NVLink, which is an additional 14.4 terabits per second of optical I.O. per server, OSFP 800 gig routed with fiber in the middle of the row to, uh, in the middle of the rack to middle of row switching. And that gives us one exaflop of AI performance, more than 20 terabytes of HBM3 memory per scalable unit and 70 terabytes per second of bisectional bandwidth. We're not, we're not uh, standing still. Um, we announced Grace CPU last year, and it's being worked on now. It's in the oven. Um, this is an ARM CPU designed for AI machine learning workloads. Um, it's designed to alleviate that memory capacity performance conundrum that I mentioned earlier. What it allows you to do is connect using NVLink, connect 
uh, CPU to a GPU or a CPU to a CPU and unlock the memory, the bandwidth of that interface uh, to DDR memory coming off of Grace. So we're moving from 0.2 terabytes per second of memory accessible memory bandwidth, which was here, to more than two terabytes per second of accessible memory bandwidth um, within, within a system. So, you know, the, the, the conclusion here is that that bottleneck in the optical interconnect and the network is not going to go away anytime soon. So, we talked about GPU bandwidth, it's growing. What other factors will you know, affect the use of optics or drive the use of optics in our uh, cluster solutions? Uh, the, obviously, the, the, the drive of bandwidth um, will likely lead us to move to 200 gig surties sooner than the rest of the industry out of necessity. Uh, more parallelism, so again, solving that demand supply curve issue, we need to create larger and larger GPU domains. This has two impacts, one, bigger networks, two, more bisectional bandwidth in the network, more optics. Because of the runs, uh, well, because of, because of the, the need to connect as many GPUs together in one layer of switching, as well as uh, the limits in uh, rack power density, we're forced to go to middle of row and end of row switching. This forces us to go to optics. Again, this is not a trend that's gonna go away anytime soon. Um, and finally, latency. Uh, we mentioned latency in the last talk. Latency is important, but not, maybe not for the reasons that you think. Uh, latency for us is not a performance issue per se. Latency for us limits the distance of the interconnect. And shorter interconnects mean smaller GPU clusters. And so our motivation to lower latency, at least in the short term, is about keeping the cluster sizes growing. If we scale using traditional optics, we're gonna run into a problem, mostly related to cost. Um, now, I will say that a lot of value is being generated right now, and my major concern is, is ramping optics volume um, more than addressing cost and power, but this will come very soon after. So this, will, this, this issue, does require a rethink of how we use optics and how we develop optics for the next generation and AI ML systems. So last slide, a couple of thoughts. What does optics for AI ML look like going forward? This is not a roadmap statement. This is just some thoughts from myself. First of all, we should fully utilize the capabilities of modern CERTES. Um, generally speaking, the standards are being set at a lowest common denominator, and that's driving a lot of overhead and a lot of, um, uh, you know, the, a lot of, um, I would say, um, there's the, it, it's, it's uh, burdening the, the optical interconnect. Modern CERTES are very powerful devices, and we develop our own and we fully try to fully utilize those CERTES in our optical interconnects. Similar, in a similar vein, um, the standards tend to set uh, host channel definitions um, as worst case, and again, this overly burdens the development, the specification of optics. There's been recent moves to allow for uh, lower loss or mid loss channels to be used for setting standards, and I'm a, a, an advocate of that, particularly for server systems and to allow innovation in switch design. So I think this is important. The two of these things will ultimately lead to lower complexity signal processing, 
read time when we have to, not, and, and only when we have to. Let's not add more effect than we need to. Let's keep this simple. More parallelism. This is sort of borrowing from the compute and memory guys a little bit. Um, parallelism also allows you to reduce the overhead of signal processing. It moves the burden to packaging and integration, but they're problems that can be solved once and scaled over multiple generations. And lastly, to enable integration, we need more efficient modulators in those integration platforms, and we need more efficient laser sources. I would say these are the two things that we think about the most as we think about uh, optics component development. I'll stop there. Thanks.